Hello again. Um, this is the Q&A session that we hold every Wednesday and here are a few of the recent questions. I had a long email from Carol Marcellus uh, asking about how to set up a big project like the Muncaster bed hanging and will I be giving any video tutorials on the Silk Elizabethan projects? She's had difficulty with those. So Silk is a very, very tricky thing to work with. I quite agree. Um, by the way, this orange thing popping up is my laptop cover. Very, very lively colour, which I love because I never lose it. Anyway, going back to um, Carol's um, email, that's a huge subject. So I think we should cover that in a separate email. And I'm going to ask my friend Harriet Roberts to set up, uh, show how she set up her frame because she's now on her second or third huge project. So um, perhaps she would do that, the honours for us there. Um, and handling the Elizabethan silks, that's a skill in itself. Um, you need to have uh, hands that are absolutely snag proof. So you really do need to have very smooth skin, no overhang. Um, you know, your nails need to be absolutely perfect. And you really need to use a very good moisturiser on your hands for about six weeks before you go near silk. And then after that, you will be able to use it, I'm sure. Um, Jackie Fields, new cruel work, she says. How would you support a slate frame while stitching with both hands free? Question. Okay, so slate frame with hands free, um, you would actually um, uh, put the slate frame, grip it really with two supports, so one either side. So you can have a Lowry frame one either side or one side Lowry frame, a ratchet clamp to something solid like a table on the other side, or you could actually just rest it between two supports of some sort. Um, I really like the IKEA trestle supports. I think they're great and they're not expensive, but there are lots of other, um, if you if you Googled it, you would find lots of other suppliers. But if you want to do it and not buy anything, then look out for something in your own home and perhaps use a clamp or a brick over it. So um, that's how you would use a slate frame. Uh, there are lots of um, videos about slate frames as well. Okay, the other question she asked, Jackie Field, is it okay to use a round hoop that is smaller than the area to be stitched? So you have to squash the already stitched area to finish your design. Okay, that is actually not from Jackie, that's from YouTube. Uh, Lissingo Van Gomo, I think it's from her. Anyway, whoever it's from, here is something that I'm squashing. Can you see that? And that's fine. You just move it over and use my cling film saran wrap plastic method. Just cover the whole frame as you squash the outer frame over. And apart from when you're doing a metal thread where you really would want a, a frame bigger than the area that you're stitching, but um, it's absolutely fine for crawl work, which of course is my thing. Um, what is the brand of the larger frame that was easier to tighten, is it one from Needle Needs? I don't think it is one from Needle Needs. I think you're referring to something with a screw side. And um, that is actually, it's okay. It's absolutely amazing, but it's very difficult to clamp it at the side. So it's it's not, you know, there are pros and cons. You really need to um, perhaps join a needlework group when we're all allowed to do that and to discuss that with your friends. Uh, without actually seeing you physically, I can't really advise on what frame would suit you. Um, I just absolutely love the seat frames as my go-to frame. Susan Muse and uh, Linda Dodd Gosley Cassidy ask the same question. On the Christmas stocking video 16, once you snip off that thread where you finish, do you just leave it like that? Yes. So if you watch my start and finish techniques, when I finish the thread, it's a couple of little stitches out the top, snip, and that's absolutely fine. So um, it doesn't unravel. Right, Facebook from Facebook, Carol Tyndall. I haven't started yet, mine yet. Just getting to transferring the design into the linen. So she's obviously doing the stocking. A couple of questions, please. Gosh, it's awfully polite. <laughs> Usually people just demand stuff. Um, one, if unable to use a light box, could you use dressmaker carbon paper to trace the design onto the linen? Right, okay, I don't really like it very much on Dressmaker Carbon because I don't find it, I, I, I don't know, with the bumps in the linen, it's quite tough to get a good clean line and you don't want a messy line. So I would rather use the paper pattern method than that that I showed you on a previous video. Okay, 
um, or because of the raised line in the linen. Oh yeah, there she goes. Is there a danger of rubbing carbon onto areas not going to be stitched? Yes, I would say there is. I wouldn't use carbon paper. Oh yeah, also you could put pressure on your hand onto the linen while transferring the design. That's a very good point. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Let's not use uh, carbon um, carbon paper. Okay, question two from Carol Tyndall. I plan to use a roller frame. Should I complete all the lattice area top to the bottom and then go back to the top to do the clouds and other features? Or do you do the whole thing in completed sections? I actually show on the, my videos that I'm doing it in completed sections. So by the time you see this video, we might have caught up with that and you'll be able to see that I'm actually doing it section by section, but actually um, I'm then missing the unicorn and going straight to the lower section. 